So the, the price of fast food go up in the states where it's gone past 15. So higher wage for workers makes your prices go up is one of those things that is technically true, but it's also a conservative scary talking point to try and make people oppose things that are good for workers. So yes, wages being higher does make products go up, but it's not proportional. It's not, I pay my workers 10 or 20 or 25% more and all of my food prices go up proportionally to match that. It's a, it's a boogeyman story, yeah. The amount, the amount you increase wages by is not is not directly how much prices go up by. That's such a sad drop. Yeah, and then you have things like all these companies that like they increase prices due to inflation and then those companies also posted like record profits year in and year out so it's like it really wasn't an increase due to inflation it was an increase due to greed and then inflation was the cover Yeah, they've actually run a few studies like that, and it's one of the reasons why universal school lunches is such good policy. In, in everywhere they've studied it, when they run free school lunches for kids, the prices of groceries go down in that area. And it's in, it's in large part due to the fact that the demand goes down a little bit, so the supply adjusts accordingly. I'm staying. I'm gonna Eliath them on the left and then bleed here. If they get rid of Mindscape, I could be sad, but Eliath on the left seems like big game here. I'm coming. Oh my god, what a fucking massacre. Enjoy your infant up, buddy. Was it good for you? It was good for me. Activate, but mostly a miss so far. Uh, the new card is good, I think. And Hellcow is good. Black Swan kind of sucks, and Symbiote Spider-Man definitely sucks. Chat, what is capitalism? Explain it to me like I'm five. Capitalism is a econ economic model that dictates companies put profits above all else to keep making their stock prices go up. And absolute stone cold idiots who don't have eyes in their head or a brain in their body will tell you that capitalism drives innovation. But in reality, that's not how it Hello. works. The, the reality is that what capitalism ultimately does, holy forking shirt balls, what capitalism ultimately does is encourage companies to buy each other out 
because buying out the competition is cheaper than actually innovating. Fuck her up, Buttercup! Oh, Cosdo! Say hello to my not-so-little friend. Can you hear me? Capitalism. Capitalism is the is what is the capitalism is the reason that uh, ISP internet service providers in the United States simply stay out of each other's way so they can keep their quality of service low and their prices high. So if I put. Pixie here, I actually draw before her trigger happens. So I'm gonna put Pixie in the middle, which means they're probably gonna get to draw, but I'm also okay with that. I just wanna draw after Pixie's trigger. Honestly, I should probably snap them here. Pixie made Giganto cost six. Fantastic card. We finally had a second internet company come to the area. It's $100 less than our previous plan and faster. Unironically, um, when the fiber internet company finally moved into Bloomington where I live, it was less than six months before Comcast started offering gigabit internet. Which is another way to say they could have been offering gigabit internet the entire time, but instead we're simply choosing not to. Pixie actually hasn't swapped a single cost so far. They've all they've all been exactly exactly what we drew them as. Yeah, there was only one one energy card left in my deck, but I had a few four energy cards. Some of these sixes could have been fours. worried about getting caught by a Cosmo with this, but I think they're more likely to Cosmo one of these two lanes. Core getting rid of our alliance was rude, yeah. I'm coming for you. How do private companies monopolize housing? Oh, I know the answer to this one. Wait, wait, wait. Pick me. Pick me. Uh, private companies monopolize housing by buying out housing for rental properties and things like Airbnbs, making it so there's fewer houses for people who want to buy a home to live in to own. Oh, it's so sad. They just shuffled my Eliath again. Unlucky. Did I lose the left to Iron Man? They go up to 18. I lose the left to Iron Man by two. That's so sad. If you like Kate Bishop is generically too good. I am a little surprised they haven't shaved some amount of points out of Kate's kit, yes. Escaped. I think you could take two points out of Kate's arrows and 
she's still very, very good and sees the same amount of play. Sad for us. I could be a war machine, I guess. have the Ghost Rider, but I don't want to get caught by a Cosmo on the last turn, so I'm going to play him this turn. They can't really put stats in the right, and I don't, I don't think they're capable of beating this in the center. They can't Iron Man here. Does US Agent get us on the right? Uh, US Agent would be 11, I guess? Get them to 17. They would need, need US Agent plus four. Someone asked, do other companies do capitalism better than the United States? Uh, capitalism is by and large a global thing. The things that other countries do markedly better than the United States tend to be things like uh, gun control and um, health care are the big, the big things. And health, health care is tied up in capitalism a little bit in the United States because... It's a for-profit institution here. So it's not not strictly one-to-one, -one, but... Yeah, Pixie finally did something. Thanks, girl. The concept of leaving the stage because of capitalism is delusional. It's also like, just ignores the idea that leaving the United States isn't something that's free to have happen. The idea that like, if you don't like it, you should leave ignores the fact that like, moving to another country is incredibly fucking expensive. I don't know how much this costs. The fact that Howard doesn't let me see pixie adjustments is so tilting. Forklift, thank you for the 54 months. Appreciate it. Hello, so happy. Why would I ghost rider the path with your US agent in it? Oh, baby! 
baby so happy so happy I feel happy do do Am I am I competing here? I don't know that I am. I could put Giganto here and he's plus nine. I think this wins the game most of the time, right? It's putting me to 17, 19 over here, and I'm blowing away an Iron Man in the middle, which I think is the only way we lose that. Smooches! pretty good. This build seems sweet so far. I'm kind of into it. Yeah, we would have beaten the Iron Man with Dex there. It was a fun high roll in that last game. All right, let's let's uh, let's roll some adverts. And when we return, we will uh, see if we can continue to have sweet games with this one. Shout out to our viewer for sending in. Don't go anywhere, gamers. I'm gonna run to the bathroom, subs, PRB. Oh, I think we're gonna stand up when we get back. One of those mythical magical Wednesdays that happens twice a month in my home where angels from outside come in and clean all the bathrooms in my house. They're wonderful, wonderful people. Remember, you said something about caches being auto claimed in the event of a change. Does that mean if I hold them for the next series drop, they'll be claimed? No, series drops don't apply, aren't a cash change. Also, you don't realistically need to hold a bunch of reserves for when series drops happen, because odds are you're going to have some of the cards that are dropping, and you won't need that many to get all the ones that hit series three. Yeah, it would, be, it would be like a big economy overhaul, like the introduction of spotlights is what they're referring to when they said they would force open reserves if they ever changed the economy. difference between a socialist and a communist? Well, if you ask the average conservative in America, they mean the same thing as well as Marxist. And the, the actual truth of that answer is that there really isn't anybody in any reasonable position of power in any modern countries that's really running on fully socialist or communist platforms. I will say, I will say that I personally living in the United States in the Midwest where we have brutal winter sometimes, I personally really enjoy the communist snowplow that clears my street 
so the communist school bus can take my children to their communist public school that the community all chips in to pay for. Escaped. Never forget that every, every single social advancement that's happened in the United States in the last, I don't know, forever, hundred years or more at least, has been called communist by the conservative party here. Obama, Obama was gonna take your guns and he was gonna turn the United States into a communist country. Biden was definitely gonna take your guns and turn the United States into a, into a communist country. And by golly, if that president, Vice President Harris isn't gonna take your guns and turn turn us into a communist country. What do, what do words mean anyways? DUI laws were called communists too. Yep. Seatbelt. Seatbelt laws were, were almost assuredly referred to as fascism, I would wager. I'm gonna play this and slide it into the middle, and then we'll like Jubilee here plus Eliot here, I think is the plan long term. I hope I hope this deck ends up being good enough to get a YouTube highlight chat because our discussion points we had during it all will rattle the cages that honeypot a lot of shitheads on, on the YouTube side. You can always tell the videos where we had a solid political discussion at one point or another because they'll, uh, they'll have a lot of downvotes or thumbs down or dislikes or whatever. All right, time for the most skillful part of Marvel Snap. Where do they, where do they play the hella? I think strategically they're supposed to play it here because this is the lane they need to win, but who knows. So. I, think they're, I think they're supposed to play it left most of the time, but also like, you know, it is, it is what it is. Marvel Snap is really fun, do-da, do-da. Marvel Snap is really fun, oh, the do-da day. I think the Hellcow change is gonna be up there with the Loki change for single worst text box change the Marvel Snap team has ever made. It's one of, it's one of those changes where the outcoming result of it is just like basically never positive. Worse is in OP. No, worse is in the quality and types of games that Hella generates are never good. Even when I beat Hella, it was just an RNG fiesta and I feel like my time got wasted. It, do it doesn't matter if I win or lose, I walk away from the match feeling like, why, why, why did we bother? War Machines enabling some toxic stuff too. See, I actually kind of disagree with that one. If anything, I think War Machine and the Legion complaining is just hammering home the point I try to make really often, which is people don't play enough Quake, Nocturne, Scarlet Witch, uh, Legions of their own, etc. Literally all of the War Machine toxicity is handled by you simply playing a location interactive card. And then they're just like kind of this okay clunky deck. 
Actually, I actually think all of my favorite War Machine decks that have felt the most powerful to me have explicitly not been playing the Legion combo. Those decks, those decks are annoying, but I tr truly, I think people who bring up stuff like Legion Lock in comparison, in comparison to um, Hela or Erishim don't understand the point of what I'm talking about. Like you're just, you're, you're missing it is like the TLDR. Discard, don't need to. You want to play a War Machine deck to lock people out of the game. I want to play a War Machine deck to hear Infinite's voice line more often. We are not the same. That's such a good one. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now this looks like the game to me, so everybody, just come and see. I will, I will say that so far Hella's performance metrics make me believe that she is unlikely to maintain a presence at the top of the metagame long term. Her performance looks competitive but not overbearing and there are decks like clog and other linear decks that go over the top of her that will likely push her down in popularity long term i can i am objective enough to both acknowledge i think the play patterns are also awful but also talk about like you know she's just, it's just annoying right like i said it's nothing to do with power level and everything to do with like i feel like my time was wasted because the game didn't really have decision points i think i think too often people conflate those like i, I can't tell you the number of people i blocked on twitter talking about Erishim, where people are like, you just don't like to lose. It's just like, nothing about this discussion has anything to do with how much I like winning or losing. It's like, you're just completely missing the point, either willfully, willfully or not. Really unfortunate, Sokovia. Probably dead here, unless they brick hard. Yeah, the comments about you're just complaining because you don't like to lose are people projecting because the only time they ever feel bad is when they lose the game. The only thing they care about is winning. Just a little projection. Uh, Eliath, Giganto, two ones, two fours. Yeah, this sounds, sounds worth playing. That is probably pass on four, infinite on five here. Now that is an absolute bop. Because it gives me War Machine, which lets me also do this next turn, but also have priority now. So you're saying there's a chance. I'm coming for you. What is Howard doing in this deck? He makes your Jubilee a little bit better, and he's just another one energy card because you need one energy cards to make um, 
What's it called? Good. So this hella popping here is actually quite good for us because it lets us know deterministically where their stats are. Is that one good, chat? What do we think about that one? Any any opinions on the zero energy Giganto here? Hello, so happy. How does this lose? What does it lose to? Power outage. Would lose to an Odin. Yeah, not playing around that. Smooches! We are the future. The fuck is there a wasp in their deck? Victory. For Blink? It must be for Blink, yeah? Weird. Oh, it beats Jean Grey as well. Sure. Okay, so chat, pop quiz. What am I supposed to do on the first turn of this game? This is a good, good conquest tip. It is. Always correct co correct to snap. Why is it always correct to snap? It's always correct to snap because we are in high stakes rounds, meaning one cube and two cubes are the same for me. And this snap puts my opponent all in, meaning they have to decide, is this the game for them? So this, this snap is free for me and it's a decision for my opponent. Do they want this to be the game or do they want to take a mulligan? So this is, people often ask for, okay, well, how does Conquest differ than Ladder? Largely it doesn't, except in moments like this, where my snap is not predicated based on board position or my hand or the matchup. It's based on what are the health totals and are we in high stakes or not? Well, this is a banger starting hand. We just need one boom, boom, boom. Oh, their death is free. If we hit a, if we hit an infidel, we could probably beat free death. How has this deck been performing so far? So we're currently playing against Hella, which means I have no idea how this deck performs because we're just playing an RNG casino. Whoo, that's a good one, yeah? Two ones and all the sixes? Sign me up. This does mean if I draw one of the big sixes, I might not be able to lady sip it though. That's close, I think this is right. Will they discard it there? Is it this? I think it's this. I think it's this. Orbius turns death off. That's a good shout. I I almost put the pixie right too, but I didn't want to get got by a random freaking uh random freaking throne room and lose. It's a coward who got punished for it. And they both hit a playable card off the hub. And they had their wasp rip. I really need running bangers here. Two of our six costs are right here. So if we draw back to back on these, they should be really cheap. They either just drew the death or they're ghosting us, one of the two. Play another. 
entire fucking game. Shoot for that. Oh no, locksmith! I'm coming for you. Alright, one more for all the marbles, huh? Good start for us. We want to draw one of our threes or fours next turn. We want to avoid drawing our sixes and our last one, ideally. On. Oh, come the fuck on. Seriously? At least there's a, a what's it called on top of our deck, a three here. So annoying, though. Daddy's little bog champion! Yes, you are! Yes, you are! Hashtag bless chat. I think I'm passing this turn, unfortunately. Well, we know the infinite won't cost six if I draw it. They have to leave. We're all in, Chet. I think we're actually dead. That's so sad. I need Ghost Rider on top of my deck. I need it to not cost six. Oh wait, I have a War Machine and a Lyoth over here too. Goliath wins. We're two thirds to win the match. Okay. If we would have hit a Goliath, we would have won because of the Ghost Rider buff. So there was War Machine, a Goliath, and again to win the bid there. But a little bit of RNG breaking our way there at the end. All right, let's see if we can uh, put a bow on it and uh, hit our hit an infinite ticket here, huh?
might be a fact-finding mission this game, chip. This matchup's probably a little tough. If they're, uh, like, collector discard, I bet their numbers outscale us with some consistency. Mobius can catch their swarms occasionally. Does that ever win the game? I don't know if I want to show up actual cards here. Is the, is the thing. My, my Jubilee doesn't do anything next turn. Yeah, I think I think I just chill and collect information. So I'm just filling in cards with the tracker we're retreating for one here. Haven't learned haven't learned anything super relevant, but maybe we see a piece of spice. Uh, they definitely, I don't know that they should have snapped on four, but they should definitely snap this turn. I think it's a mistake for them not to have raised the stakes on five and showing the other card. I don't know. It's just Lady Sif and Apocalypse are both cards we can infer they have anyways. But, uh, they're not really losing much. Is the duck only here for Jubilee? So, duck helps Jubilee, but it's also helpful with Pixie, because you want three to four one drops with Pixie to shuffle around. Vibin, we're vibin. Snap. They have priority, so I don't have to worry about Machine World messing us up here. Just pick the impact the order of your cards now. So duck on duck on one can also impact your pixie decision sometimes too. Like if you duck on one and you see your top card is like Mobius or Lady Sif, you might want to not pixie on two because you know you're not shuffling a lower cost onto like a six most likely. So you can kind of wait and like draw one of your middle cost cards because you know it's there. Not a not a huge value, but definitely like exists. I could have gone better, but it also could have gone worse. I'm losing their Dracula was not ideal, I assume. Do you prefer Luke in the Hella deck or no? I don't have any preferences for the Hella deck because it's disgusting and annoying. I only have a Giganto and a Blade discarded here, so this Ghost Rider's bringing back a 14 power thing. And then hopefully Eliath closes things up for us. Oh, they're taking priority. Well played. I'm coming for you. We're gonna draw Infinaut here. Thought I wanted for Christmas. They've been to an apocalypse, yeah?
I thought I heard a I'm coming for you. That was Apocalypse, wasn't it? Oh, no, that was, that was Colleen Wing, not Sif. Jubilee right and pray. Uh, I guess that is a decent shot at being okay. If I do this, so I'm beating Proxima here and I'm beating Proxima here. It says 18 up to 23. I think I like that. Yeah, really good. Victory. This is two thirds to beat the Moon Knight here. So I think I beat the Proxima in both lanes, then we beat the Moon Knight on the right. Looking to draw a three or a four this turn. Want to keep the ones and sixes in the deck. Six drop is the worst possible draw. Infinite, very likely to cost one. Glass half full. I don't know if my body is ready to bin Howard the Ductilini Sif here. Two and three, but lost lost that one. Sad, but not the end of the world. Our machine down here. This it's Ghost Rider. It's pretty good too. One infinite, please. We're dead to Modoc Apocalypse. for one. The shame we didn't try and put out your picture cues. See, it's pretty good. Can we keep the sixes in our deck? Come on, game. Come on, game. Give me a three or a four. Give me a three or a four, not another six. Bahak! 
god, losing the... Losing the what's it called is so brutal there. We do have a guaranteed infinite on next turn, that's true. I might I might need two spots for it. Depending on where we're gonna put the infinite. I think it's left. Speaking of the opener is a little sad. Although it does mean we have Black Knight in Blade, which is a little bit to be happy about. Get how we're down so you get a little bit of info about sequencing. Oh, hey, uh, a Moon Knight could jack us up a little bit, but I'm definitely snapping here. We're in a good spot. This is also really good for them, is noteworthy here. If they, if they have a Moon Knight, they're about to fuck us up. Okay, we just gotta get and keep priority so we can ally if their, uh, their big play on the last turn. If they have Modok on five here, we're gonna be torched. Are we supposed to Jubilee to put Mobius in the middle? That's an interesting thought because it keeps their swarm stranded in their hand. I kind of like that. Do I just do this then and pull two? What a photo finish. What a photo finish. Papi! Wowie! Yowza. Yowza. They hit the one and three twice! 
They hit the one in three twice! Twice! They hit the fucking one in three! Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Holy forking shirt balls. Wow. No, they needed both of them, yeah. Uh, and I know Infinite's coming, right? So there's no reason to play Black Knight here. By a moon knight. I like that there are cautiously playing swarms out. That makes you smile. again to on the left yeah they also have Proxima Left to the left, gonna play again to, to the left. Okay, we can just find one of our three fatties, we're in a good spot. Never heard of him, Chet. These Conquest matches are so much more interesting to watch than people playing ladder. Yeah, the ladder is just a lot of retreating when people are at the top.
Yeah, 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 we're playing the rock. So the question of if I'm filling here or here. Swarm is the highest cost card in their hand right now. could have scripted better television than this chat. This has been a pretty, pretty good set. I shouldn't have played that. Shouldn't have played that. Should not have played that. So they should have held it in hand so I don't get screwed by this location. That's fine. That's fine. Bird's got my back. Wide eyes can't lose step keeps. Playing it here on one means when Tinkerer's Workshop hits on two, we have priority before Moon Knight comes down. Just like we, just like we drew it up. This fucking game of marble snap I ever played in my life, video gamers. what this does before I make other choices here. I'm coming for you. That could that could have been a jubilee. Ignore if I wasn't just ignoring the Dracula path, I would say sure, but I think I'm just ignoring the Dracula path, yeah. I'm beating Modoc plus one swarm, and I'm beating Modoc plus three swarms, so I think we should be in the clear here. They haven't discarded Apocalypse yet. Well, let's check out the opponent's phone. Genuinely, I think the opponent seems like they're a good sport. I know they emoted a couple extra times after they hit the double one and three in the six cube game, but I don't know that I really blame them for that. It was a pretty big variant swing game. Really close. Really close. Good read from them at the end too that I was punting Crimson Cosmos. They put they put their most points possible in the center. We just had enough to overcome it. This deck honestly felt really sweet. Um I I think I have I have two uh not so clear takeaways to share up front. The the first is that I started the match the set off by questioning Jubilee a little bit 
and by the end of it, both Jubilee and Howard really grew on me. Like, obviously, these two have direct synergy with each other, but Howard also felt kind of good with Black Knight and Blade in a way that I wasn't fully expecting going into it. And he has some loose synergy with Pixie as well, where if you have Howard on one, you can like look at your top card before you Pixie. We did plenty of Pixie stuff. Uh, War Machine is not replaceable in this deck. War Machine is a unique and powerful effect that makes it so these two cards are very, very playable for you. So I, I honestly don't think I'd make any changes here. I think uh, Eliath felt like the right third six drop. Um, the, the dash of interaction that Mobius and Eliath gave us was critical in a couple of the games that we played. Um, yeah, as far as higher series cards go, I don't really know that any are super replaceable. I think, I think Eliath is probably the most replaceable. You'll lose some games where its interaction is good, but like regular Hulk, Magneto, or, um, Red Hulk could replace this if you're missing it. But, uh, Black Knight, Mobius, War Machine, and Pixie are all doing this kind of really unique effect that no other card in Marvel Snap is going to be able to replace or give you something similar. So I like Goliath. I'm pretty confident it's the right third six drop, but I also think it's a card that like you could replace it and still win a lot of your games. All right, well, that one gets a title and it gets to stay in the...